Ah, that was truly bloody special. This is my home, and I thought those crowds were gonna stuff up this image tonight. But it was just another cracker. Welcome to a Peter Pound in South Australia. Oh, I love this place. G'day ladies and gentlemen, and welcome for joining me for another vlog in the beautiful South Australia, capturing an image that reminds me of an image that I caught over in Europe. Last night I was driving up this road. This is a typical sunrise photo because it sunrises directly behind where you guys are standing right now. So you get that beautiful glow of Morpina. But later on in this series, I want to capture an iconic location at sunrise. So I thought, why not replicate an image that I shot in the Dermatol National Park when I was there with my beautiful girlfriend because it reminded me so much of this, creating layers. But the thing is, I have to be very quick because that cloud cover could destroy the entire composition before sunset. So make sure to drop below and subscribe. Let's get set up and catch this beautiful image. All right, now I've had a bit of time to assess the scene because here I was briefly here and did have a lot of time to look through composition elements that I really wanted to incorporate. And now that I'm here and had a bit of time to look, I've got three elements that I really need to incorporate in the composition. First one's leading line of the road going over top of the valley into Alpena, sort of giving the viewer something to lead into, which we touched on earlier in this series. Then also lighting, which is obviously the main aspect of what I want to capture, the beautiful harsh light coming in. But also that does incorporate the trees that are getting lit up. Looks a bit autumnal, but it's not. I'm going to touch on that a little bit later because we are in the outback of Australia. And the last bit is what I love, the segmented parts of Wilpena itself, the mountains, the layers that it's giving into that depth of, of the image. But now I'm going to have 15, 20 minutes to catch this image. And secondly, just work out if I'm going to shoot panoramic or a single exposure for it. So many dilemmas, but such a beautiful image. I need to get rushing. It's been a hectic last five or 10 minutes. Conditions are changing so quickly, which is, means the composition is changing for me quickly also. Because when I first set this composition up, I was shooting with the XF55 to 200. That was because the conditions suited that, but as it got lower, the light got more harsh, the panoramic wasn't working out the way I wanted it to, and I still don't think it is. So I put the 1655 on, shot my vertical panoramic in that, but I'm not getting enough foreground element. I think I'm a little bit too high in elevation. And when I sort of level off that horizon, shoot across, I'm getting sort of one third sky. So when I blend it together, I'm not sure I'm not go going to get enough. So I can't rely on it solely. But I put the XF 1655 for two reasons. I wanted to handheld the 55 to 200 and get some beautiful images of that layers. But also with this, I could shoot around that 40 millimeters and get a single image just in case. But what I'm actually about to do with these conditions that are happening right now is change back to the 55 to 200 and get some more intimate details of this scene because I'm getting the last bit of light. I think in the next three or four minutes, the light off the road is going to be completely gone, so it's not going to work. So I'm going to show you some images now of what I liked, change back to the 55 to 200 and see how we go.
Ah, Bellissimo, absolutely perfect. I think I've played this one absolute tea with focal ranges, with lighting. The light's completely gone right now, but in the next 15, 20 minutes, the sun's gonna set. Be beautiful to watch, but it wouldn't be nice to photograph. You wouldn't get those layers in the mountains that I'm after. You wouldn't get those trees in the foreground lighting up that road, giving that segregation between the layers of the mountains. It, I think I've actually played it really, really perfectly tonight. I'm very actually proud of myself for the first time photographing here. But I want to touch back on that light of those trees in the foreground because it gave me sort of an autonomous feel and a lot of life to the foreground. We're coming into summer season, so about the next 30 days, it's gonna change from this green, and yes, this is green if you're watching from Europe. I know you're laughing right now, but this is very green from where I am in the Flinders Ranges. In 30 days, it's gonna be dry, barren, and absolutely dust bowling up here. So this is the green season. The last 10 years, the Flinders Ranges has really struggled with drought. So this is the greenest I've ever seen in my whole entire life, and it is very, very beautiful now. But because we went through that wet season of floods, coming into summer, we're already talking 30 degree days now that I'm photographing in. So in 30 days, it's gonna be 35 to 40 degrees. So all this is gonna die off. So it's almost like that autonomous feel giving that beautiful yellowish color, but it's not. It's springtime here, but everything comes to life in our winter and dies in the summer. So it's sort of the opposite to the Northern hemisphere. So that gave me that autonomous feel to photograph. So. I don't know, it almost feels like an alpine scene that I'm back in the Dermton National Park in Montenegro, but I'm not. I'm in the Flinders Ranges in the complete outback 400 k's north of where I live. It's, it's quite special. I don't know, sort of those memories that go through your mind of all those traveling to sort of mix and match areas and this is home for me. It feels very special. So, but guys, I've photographed from 55 to 200 everything and anything that I've liked. I haven't liked. I photographed it. Some of exposure bracketed, but generally I've shot at F8, 160 ISO, and shot that automatic shutter speed. So here are those images now. If I've captured anything that I truly, truly love, you will see them. But for me, I'm gonna sit here and watch the rest of this sunset. Oh, guys, I wish I could take you to every nook and cranny in this beautiful place, the Flinders Ranges, but one, it's too bloody big. And secondly, I don't have enough days in my whole entire life to do that. But please make sure to drop below and subscribe because I'm gonna take you to as many places as I possibly can in this beautiful place. And that's only one location in South Australia. We've still got the coastline, we've still got the Air Peninsula, York Peninsula. Oh, there's still so much, and that's only South Australia. So guys, please make sure to subscribe for that. I'm trying to introduce you to new parts of Australia that you never thought existed, and to show you and witness how beautiful my own backyard really, truly is. Thank you for helping me and supporting me on this journey. If you do like helping and supporting me, there is a link in the description below. You can pay monthly to support me for petrol, for food, whatever it is, to help get me through this tough time, especially during COVID, but we're all living in tough times at the moment. I hope you've enjoyed tonight. I guarantee you I'll see you on the next one from a beautiful place somewhere in the Flinders Ranges. Ciao.